worthy, we are not worthy. Hello. Welcome back, I'm Stanford Chidge and this is the Chelsea Fancast and we are just about to get into the meat and two veg of the show which of course is how Chelsea have been doing under the new regime of the legend, the special one, the happy one uh, and I'm not just talking about Darren Mantle, I mean Jose Mourinho. Now, uh, one of the things that we, we were teasing a little bit, Darren, before uh, we got into this part was I've done a little bit of homework. I know this is a, a new phenomenon but Chidge has done some homework and I thought it would be very, very, very interesting to uh, look at the comparison between when Jose turned up in 2004 for the first seven games and when Jose's arrived now. And here we go. Magic. Look at that. It's magic. It's like, it's like there and it comes out here. It's magic, as Paul Daniels would say. And here we go. I mean, this is the comparison. In 2004, five wins, two draws. Uh, we lost none. We conceded seven. Oh, sorry, we scored seven and conceded one, and we had 17 points. In 2013, we've won four, drawn two, lost one, uh, goals scored ten, goals conceded four, and uh, we have 14 points. So basically, A, there is only three points difference, so there isn't much difference. And secondly, it does actually bear relevance to losing at Everton. If we're not screwed that up, then maybe... Can we not go there yeah, yet? Can I say instead of that about the Everton game... That the next game in 2004 2005 was the Man City game, which we lost 1 0, which Anelka scored. So, if we beat Cardiff, we've actually got exactly the same start as yeah. we had done in 2005. But equally, let's look at it in the sense of um, the competitions kind of got closer now. So, it's I've got it's something especially for you, here. Pablo, because I'm beginning to read your mind. Can we have the next graphic? <laughs> oh, especially for Pablo. Here we go. Here it comes, everybody. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's there. Uh, those were the seven games we played in 2004, Pablo, and I, I think you're absolutely spot on. I think that we played uh, that was much a much harder first seven games than we've just had. Uh, really? Yeah, I do. No, no, I no sorry, other way round, yeah. other way round. I'm getting screamed at in my ear from David Coleman in the gallery. Sorry, it's the Lemsip. I keep telling you, I'm, I'm not on it tonight. I'm, I've been drugged by Lemsip. Uh, that's a bit of Lemsip. Mm, very nice. I recommend it if you've got a bit of a cold. <laughs> they should pay us for that. Anyway, yeah, it was a much easier seven games in 2004 than it clearly has been yeah, now. Best example it? being Spurs. If you remember that Spurs 0-0, that was when Mourinho came out and mm. coined the expression parking the so bus. Yeah. The bus. And now yeah. if you look at the Spurs team now that legitimately could be challenging for the title this year, it's going to... Fault, fault, fault. Fault, defend, fault, fault. Defend, fault, <laughs> fault, fault, fault. No, it was, not it? If, no. if I remember correctly, we uh, we had quite a few injuries to start the season that year. Smertin was playing in midfield. Smertin, Alexi Smertin. Uh, Robin hadn't hadn't made his debut. He, had, he turned up at the Black... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Jose made a specific point in that season of starting off trying to, trying not to concede goals, basically. Mm. All right, I'd, what I'd be very interested to hear is uh, what, what they're saying uh, in Benches Land and uh, particularly on Mick Salah, Lauren. Have they got any sense about this? Have we come up with a theory here or something, or what? Um, no, not yet. You haven't given, you haven't given them enough chance. What, are, they, are, they a, are they all drinking Lemsip as well? They do have some interesting comments on how they think that we've done so far this season, all right. as per your half-term report. Okay, well, I'd be interested to hear what those... I want to know if they've actually figured out what we're going to talk about tonight, because we haven't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, come back to me. Come back to you. Yeah. Terrible, te terrible, te terrible, te terrible issue. No, there's no technical issue. I think they're all half asleep. Wake up, Mixler people. Just because Paul's not in there tonight doesn't mean you can all go to sleep. <laughs> um, luckily, I have done my homework and we do have a show. I think, I think the next thing I want to talk about, because I think, I think we've kind of resolved the fact that actually, you know, Jose is doing actually just as well this time round as he was last time round. I think that's Pretty the major much. point, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. He's keeping the team... I mean, he's it's, it's really getting the team focused. I mean, that's the one thing that you're seeing now is we're starting to see what we could be about as you were saying you know, yeah. before we got on the air you know we're starting to see what we're what we could be doing and talking of which Paul I mean th my next point really that I wanted to talk about was um, you know I've called it evolution part one there's another there's evolution part two coming up later in the show but my first evolution part one is that we know that Jose has come in with a very very different brief this time and uh, it's okay. It's about legacy. It's about building, you know, for a long-term plan. But I think it's also about style of play. And I mean, how do you think, or how do you think he's doing in terms of evolving our style of play? Oh, I mean, I think we play. I mean, if you look at the whole game, you know, it started off with great guns. Beautiful football, you know, it was it? A beautiful football. And then, um, you know, it went a little. It, it sort of it's trailed off a bit. But I think that's coming back. There's lots of element. There's lots of like little bits where you see like it 
that that's going to start. We're going to start doing that more. We're going to start doing that more. And I really think that it's he's developing this team, and I'm still not sure if he knows his back four, or is. I would disagree with that. Really? I, I, yeah. Or he may have just got it now with with because it was a time. Games. Yeah, I think I think he's absolutely nailed his back seven actually. Really? Yeah. I okay. Think he wants Czech, Branner, Terry, Louise, Cole, Lampard, Ramirez. So he's got his back seven nailed. I think what he's struggling with at the moment is what's the best combination for the for the midfield three, and he knows he doesn't have a striker. Right. Well, you know, that's a lot, you know we that, we haven't got. I mean, Nando's been doing a lot better, and his attitude's a lot better, and he looks out of the three for me. The most likely. Mm. Um, uh, but I've never sort of gone down the, uh, you know, a lot of people have gone down the like, got done with Nando. They just wait, uh, I've given him enough chances. He's never going to come good. I, I'm still convinced he's actually going to have a decent season. And I thought he had a decent season last year. It was only the Premier League where he was weak. But he was pants in the Premier yeah. League, and I think there's no other way. I mean, the thing I think you know, I, I'd be interested to hear what the boys think about Nando. I mean. I still desperately want him to, want to see him do well because if he does well, then Chelsea do well. Or mm-hmm. you know, I think it's a non sequitur, isn't it? What do you what do you reckon, Darren? Um, I mean, I think about the style of play first, and then you can chip in with a bit of uh, Nando ness. I was going to say about Nando first. It's on the tip of my tongue, so I'll say it anyway. Chich. Um, Nando's uh, on the tip of your tongue. Yeah, I think that you're Nando, talking about the chicken place, obviously. He's got the third. Um, he's it's like the third sort of time he's really had. If he if we let him go in the summertime, then he might have done well elsewhere. But I think he knows if he's going to stay here. He's got to do something. He's got to play well. He's he had long enough to settle in and to play the different managers. And I do I agree with you, Paul. I think it wasn't as bad as people said. And I think I think he has really maybe other than his first when he came for his first half a season. We were all saying that the season after that he actually ran around a lot and he was trying hard. He was getting a lot of assists. Um, but they never really spoke about that, and um, I don't know. I don't think he's as bad as people say. He's obviously not worth fifty million, but he's not as bad as people say. And in terms of style, I, I do actually agree with you as well, Chich, about his back seven. I do think he seems to have them sorted out. The strikers, you know, you're going to come on too soon, but that is one of the things with a big question mark. I think ever else, he's actually quite happy with the players that he has. I think here's a question for you, Ross. I mean, you know, I, I don't. I actually hate tick attack of football because it just makes me think of Barcelona or Arsenal, both of whom I loathe with a passion. And it seems to me that he kind of started off with a little bit of tick attack and he's kind of gone back to more what I would call, you know, thoughtful football. And I, I think we talked about it on the last show, you weren't here, but we talked about it against Norwich where he was actually mixing it up. They were playing a bit of tick attack they were sometimes going wide and they were sometimes going long. Um, what, what do you think about that, mate? Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think he's... Un- I, I don't want to use the term tick attack because it, it's, it's a very single-minded philosophy, whereas... Ideally, you want to keep most of the ball, but you do want to mix it up. You want a plan A, a plan B, you want a bit of variety. And I think it will click. I think it will click soon. Um, and I think the team's basically waiting for a signature result. We kind of got it out in Bucharest. But I think once we put a team to the sword in the Premier League, I think I think that sort of uh, caution and lack of confidence will, will disappear. And, and, I, and I think things will, will, will move forward, will evolve, as you say. Well, one of the things that I think was a signature result, which is, funnily enough, nobody talks about, and I was actually very cross that nobody talked about it in the media after Man City got absolutely blown away with them, but I think the signature result was against Bayern Munich, when actually, you know, we were the better team, frankly, uh, and we were very unlucky to, yeah, to lose that penalties. I mean, exactly, mm-hmm. we had that game one, Pablo. I don't, I don't think you can call it a signature result when... Not a signature a result, result, but a signature game performance wise, Yeah, I, I mm-hmm. certainly agree, but I mean, that was... It was too early, if anything, and that was kind of we went on a three three games after that mm. where we didn't win, and that kind of led them down a completely different rhetoric of when are they going to get their win team in crisis everything. So that, as you say, got overlooked. But mm. I think it was too early to start talking about any kind of imprint or any kind of philosophy then anyway. But we be matched the best team in Europe, and I think I think Bayern are by far the yep. best team in Europe, and yet we matched them in every department mm-hmm. in that game, and City got absolutely mullered by them, which I think reveals a lot. Okay, moving it along. Um, Because we kind of touched on this with Nando, but what about the strikers? I mean, you know, A, do you think they might actually try and get a decent one? Because I don't think really we have good enough strikers. Uh, I think it's a shame we let Lukaku go, although I don't think he's ready. Um, The other way of putting this round is, will Eto do, Dan? Yeah, definitely. I've said it. You think Eto will do? I said it from then. Yeah, I do. I like him. Um, I do think he's a very good player. Just need to settle back in. He's proven himself in Spain and Italy, and Russia's a different pace and. It's a different game to here, and I think that once he gets settled, and he will, I think he'll do well. Um, I know you don't like going back to points, but I didn't realise because of the date we're actually at, 
We actually did win the next game in 2004 against Liverpool away one nil when Joe Cole scored the game. <laughs> After that was Man City, which was October 15th, which is why I tied in with this right. time of the season this time round. So Rain I'm sorry, man. I just got it wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm just delighted that you've corrected us on that Judge fundamental Bob issue. Bob. Uh, benches, any, any anything to report <laughs> from the benches? Of course. What do you got for us, baby? So, um, Dan, the CFC man, has said that he still doesn't think Jose knows he's starting eleven, and he's still figuring that out. I think we kind of agree with that, don't we? How many of them does Dan think he knows? I don't know. I'll ask him, and I'll get back to you. Okay. We'll, I'll get We've back got to all you night. We've one. got all night. Anything else? Uh, yeah. Um, Dan, he also said that he, uh, he thinks that Fernando Torres looks sharp, looks stronger, definitely more up for a fight. Interesting to see how he does after his ban. I've got a very interesting Twitter thing here. I don't know if I can actually pronounce his name. It's Olushina Taiwo, who says he thinks it's below expectations. I think Jose's ego is still there, trying to subdue matter, uh, popularity, and make some players unhappy, e.g. Aspie. I've got to say, I mean, it's a view, Olushina. It's one I fundamentally disagree with, um, because I don't know if you're old enough to remember a manager called Brian Clough, but he's probably the greatest manager the game has ever seen in some respects, certainly one of the best man managers. And I think that Jose Mourinho is up there. And I actually think that what you will see, if you have a little patience, is that you will see him develop matter into a far better all-round player than he has been. Uh, and that's what Mourinho does. He gets inside players' heads and he makes them better. And, you know, I mean, so he's got an ego. Fine. If his ego means that we become one of the best teams in the world, I'm happy. What about you, Lot? Yeah, I, I completely, completely agree regarding completely, matter completely hang on well, well, Pablo completely completely agrees with me that's never happened before <laughs> regarding matter anyway I was going to go on to <laughs> <laughs> there always has to be a caveat of course it, um, he has shown an indicator like Aspilicueta was brought up there and he like Bertrand and like um, SEN even basically haven't had a single look in at all this year and you kind of wonder when they're going to be used when they're going to develop because Aspilicueta and Bertrand are both still very young players who need game time if they're going to progress and I've do worry that they could get sidelined in this. Um, the other thing about Matter and Oscar, which of course is the big debate, um, is you know who is the best number ten? Is it Oscar or is it Matter? My own personal feeling is it's Matter, Paul. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, however, what, the way he's been using Oscar, Oscar's been um, had a really fabulous start to the season. And he scored a lot of goals for us, um, kind of what Matter would do. So, they, they, you know, Oscar's filling that role okay. If I was, you know, like you and I, we would probably choose Matter first, but I don't think Oscar. He's more of a number ten. Yeah, he, you know? he always felt as that guy behind the. Front. He, he pulls the strings and his little inside balls that he mm -hmm. does is just, and he scores goals and he makes. I, I'm not sure what Oscar's. I think Oscar. Look, I mean, we were saying, as you know, we were saying it all last year, all of us around the table, including Darren, who's scribbling notes just to make sure uh, that Oscar is going to be one of the best players in the world. I think the next World Cup, 2014, which I think Brazil will win. And I think he will be one of the players of the tournament. And I will predict now that he will be then viewed as one of the best five players in the world. But I don't really know what his best position is, Darren. Um, I don't know. I think it's hard to say. Let's not get into the whole thing about Brazil number 10 and everything else. Uh, <laughs> number 11. Well, he's not. Well, that, I mean, as, as Felipe and Davi, our mates in Brazil, were very yep. quick to point out, you know, he's actually number 11 for, for Brazil, not... And That's Neymar is number get into No Mark, no Mark is number, number um, 10. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think Oscar's actually probably is better just supporting the striker, just behind the striker. And but also, sorry, also with Oscar, I don't think he's, he showed last year, I don't think he's as effective out wide as Mata can be and as others can be. So I think it almost necessitates he plays mm. in the middle. I think I think what happened at Norwich when, when Mata and uh, Oscar actually switched quite a lot. I mean, you have to have a lot of discipline to do that, especially without the ball. But I think going forward we'll see we'll see both of them playing and during the game they'll be they'll be switching around i think i think it's it's i mean the thing is i think you know clearly they're very different kind of players i mean they can both play number 10 but it's a slightly different number 10 role i think that's what we'll see uh, lauren what, what, what any, any kind of feedback from mixler and the benches on on who's who should be number 10 matter or oscar and then yeah, on but dan the cfc man is anyone else awake in mixler yeah of course they are he's only been him chirping up so far having lots of nice conversations on here the general consensus seems to be that they think that matters an overall better number 10 but that oscar fits the number 10 more for Jose Mourinho. That's interesting. I like the way they put that. It's kind of agreeing with me, but letting me down gently. <laughs> I like that. Uh, now, uh, this is where it gets ramped up, and this part of the show is absolutely dedicated 
to our great mate and the uh, gatekeeper of Facebook, also known as Carl Jackson, and Paul immediately pricks his ears up because he knows why. Uh, David Louise, or David Louise, Captain Leader Geezer. I love the curly-haired man, I have to say. And yes, he can have intimate relations with my wife whenever he likes. I think I'm allowed to say that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Intimate, yeah. Okay. intimate okay. relationships is okay. And a bill. Wife, no, you're not allowed to say wife. No, wife, no, well, wife should be banned, obviously, <laughs> for obvious reasons. I mean, I happen to think that, that, as I said earlier on, that you know, Jose's figured out what his best uh, back four is, uh, and that is what a back four with David Luiz in there. I personally think that he is a fabulous footballer. Uh, I think he's a great footballer. Period. I think he'll be a great defender when he gets a little bit more experienced. But I also think he's the kind of player that... Uh, that's why I pay my money to go to football games. I, I will accept the uh, two or three ricks he makes in a game for the you know, the flair and the, 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 that added value that you get. I will accept that. Well, yes, but I know you don't like him. I, no, <laughs> don't, I, no, like I don't him. like him. You don't I, like I, him, No, Paul. it's not I don't like him. I think he's brilliant. There was times where I, have, I think he's the best player on the pitch. And some of the games over the last uh, like eight, two years or so that he's been with us... He's been amazing, but there's been a lot of times, and there were a lot of times towards the end of last season, and there was a couple of times earlier on where he just goes AWOL. He just completely goes, he has, he's thinking about entertaining, being that entertainer, as opposed to being the defender. You know, when he's standing behind the uh, guys on the side of the pitch when they were giving the, the notes and he's pretending to listen, and mm. well, like, AVB was giving some... But listen, his, which his, is his, cute, but... Then he goes and makes a ricket for a, for a goal, and you're like, well, if you were paying okay, attention, uh, uh, you, know, you know, it's and that, that side of thing. But you and I are of a certain age, and, and we grew up with things like the big match and yeah. uh, a match of the day. And I tell you what we remember from those. We remember Terry Mancini, we remember Mickey Thomas, and we remember Bobby Gould. And why do we remember those three things for those un, un They all made faces at the camera. They all made faces at the camera, yeah. and we remember that yeah. 20, Bowles. 30 years later. Yeah. So they have a place in the game. It's, no, they you know, do. And I say, you know, I don't mind the Miley Cyrus tongue thing. I think that's fine with him if he needs to do that. And, uh, as, long as, he just, as long as he just keeps it. <laughs> yeah, right. as long as he doesn't do any twerking, we'll be fine. No. But when he starts doing the twerking. But again, last three, four games, you know, when, he, when Mourinho started picking him as the, to replace Cahill, and, uh, he, uh, you know, he's really played solid. And it looks Cahill like there's Louise. no Louise. Louise, and he's played with a little more discipline. And when he goes, he doesn't go all the way forward. You can see him like, oh, no, I've got. He's to pass learning. It. He's absolutely and learning. Who's he lear- Why is he learning? Because he's being taught. He well. is, and that was probably my argument. And Carl Jackson, you probably this is where you were correct uh, in that Mourinho will turn him round. And I wasn't, I wasn't sure he would because I felt his ego was getting beyond him. And for me, it ain't about saying Giza and all that. For me, it's about being a defender. Mm. And I love the Giza side of it. And when he first arrived, all that funny stuff was great. But I just, you know, when I saw him making rickets, and there was just too many for me. I'm, 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 this is so good. I, mean, a, I want to talk more about this. I wasn't going to, but I'm going to carry this on after the break because I want to talk about Gary Cahill and how he fits in. So uh, we will pick this discussion up after the break. <laughs> 